Welcome to episode 76 of Gintama. We're starting a new arc this time. I don't know how long it'll be or how serious or whatever, but the preview said it was the Yagyu arc, so that's what we're going off of. We're going to see how it goes with that new character that it showed in the preview, so yeah, let's get into it. We'll watch and discuss. Got the subtitles and timer on screen if you want to follow along that way, or you can pull up the episode on the side, but let's get into it in three, two, one, play. And a new opening. Cool, because I was expecting it around episode 75, but that was a recap. So, we get it now. Real quick, during OP, subscribe. Description, Patreon, all that. Thanks. Now I'll pay attention to the new OP. All of our main characters. All happy together. Whoa! What the hell was going on there? What the hell? Oh, hello, Sachan. Uh, I approve. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that thing with Katsura's eye, is that something that's actually going to happen? We saw Takasugi and the villains, and we see her, who is in this arc. Is she going to be a major person? A mayonnaise lighter? Anyway, badminton. Okay. Um, song is okay, just kind of standard anime opening song, but you know, I like seeing the visuals and whatnot, so yeah. New opening. Cool to get a new one. Cool to get a change. See about that ED later. Mr. Raindrop falling away from me now. We are in flashback territory! This... Oh, really? Wait, it's a boy? Okay, so you're gonna be small. Small of stature doesn't mean small of character. So that person, that, that girl from the preview and in the OP, that's a guy? Okay. Crotch balls. Absolutely. I like the short hair on her. On her little kid self. Be my wife. That'd be more exciting if she was a girl, but oh well. That's a big surprise. <laughs> oh, everybody loves Hijikata. <laughs> oh, that damn Kondo. We don't want his ass, but Hijikata is here. Yeah, what is he here for? Yeah, this is not the kind of thing that he would just do for fun. There's got to be something to it. Does Kondo know about this? If he sees this and gets the wrong idea, things can be bad. Right? What is with that hair? With mayonnaise. Yeah. Mm. 
I was... <laughs> I was like, he okay, he stepped out in front of the truck, and now what? What's the plan? Nothing. He just stepped out in front of it, and it just hit him. <laughs> That's the start to the crime drama. They're begging her to get with Kondo. <laughs> To who, if not her? Oh, okay. Who are they going to put him with? <laughs> Just give me anyone. Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't give a shit. She has no obligation to help him. This will be a good for her. What the fuck? <laughs> They're giving him an orangutan! Bubbles! Is that a Dragon Ball reference? She's an orangutan, he's a gorilla. It's a match made in heaven. Look at her, she's hot. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with thick features, with two C's, of course. It's true that she, sh like, you shouldn't be asking her this. <laughs> it's not on her. Like, if she wanted to talk to him and say, don't just settle for any random orangutan. Try to find someone you actually care about, someone who's not me. She can do that. But she's not under no obligation, and especially not to marry him. But here's our guy. That's a hell of a hat. I mean, he looks like a guy eh, there. But he's very girly looking and he's small. But yeah, he's a dude. The hair doesn't help. Sounds like a girl, pretty much. Whoa, holy shit. Got the eye patch. Nice. Yagyukube. That name, though. I only think of one Kyube. But yeah, okay. Her childhood friend. There's the title of the episode. The title of the episode came from that one random line. Which really had nothing to do with anything. What are you even hammering? <laughs> Except through the roof. You can eat it now. Well, out of line. Oh, you made her cry. It's because of the bean bread. Really? Well, that's nice. I 
I mean, I feel like that's unlikely. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she's just very unphotogenic and she'll actually just be some hot human woman. He's trying to to reassure him, but I... It's a trick of the light. Optical illusion. The human eye, you know, we, we're easily fooled. Tricks of the mind. Of course. It's an important duty. Fair. Wow. But you're acknowledging that she's from the orangutan planet, meaning that you know she's not some beautiful girl. <laughs> she's gonna be a, a monkey. Literally 100% accurate. Oh, huge! Oh my god. <laughs> that wasn't conveyed in the picture. Oh, and hello, Otai is uh, right here. Um... Ah. <laughs> what? What are you saying? Yeah, she said, ooh. She looks upset. Take a page out of Hattori's book. I got ass problems. Oops. <laughs> He's like, I gotta go take a shit, but she thought he wanted to go take a walk. You gotta be more clear. Okay. And now he's back. Kondo is not gonna like this. <laughs> Wow, uh, pretty close. It's portrayed in a pretty creepy way. Ah, what the hell happened? Who, who attacked her? Oh, oops. <laughs> of course. What the hell? Anyway, um... That's, yeah, that's happening. Did he just, what, what, what? Did he poop? What just happened? Why did he poop? What? I guess he did actually have to go. Anyway, I, uh, I <laughs> okay. Did Shinpachi ever know this kid? Well, yeah, that's a... Him holding her wrists like that, especially, that's a bad thing to walk in on. It's like, what the hell's happening here? It's, it goes well with your overall look. Don't worry about it. Yeah, ew. <laughs> Why? Well, out of the bottom. Yep, it was his idea. Does really not. <laughs> Say whatever you want. <laughs> his little brother! <laughs> or that I tore my ass. <laughs> Can't tell him that. Nobody must know. Ooh, that's insulting. Good thing she can't understand. Hmm. 
Maybe he thinks they'll understand because they have a big dog. That's so small, that's not even going to do anything for her. I mean, that's just what I call her. Yeah. Whoa. Holy shit! Animal abuse! Are we gonna go in- is this arc gonna be about a war between Earth and Orangutan Planet? Because that seems like where we're going. <laughs> I'd be into that. Let's do it. Planet of the Apes, Gintama style. Oh, his poop fell out! What the fuck? Gintama. His shit just fell out of his fucking pants. Why? It just... His shit just fell out. Okay. Oh, Joe. Oh, now you blame it on her and you kick her into the water. Earth is doomed. You maniacs. You blew it all up. And then there was a, a remake with an Abraham Lincoln monkey and it didn't make sense and we can forget that. Well, we, he's pissed! He's going on the offensive! You don't have to marry someone to kiss them. I think. Tossed his ass. So they knew each other. To go off with me. Okay, what children say is meaningless. You're actually an insane person. You're, this is kidnapping. This is sexual assault. <laughs> no, that's not, no. Because this is, this is literally a crime. That is correct. I said a lot of shit when I was a kid. But she's actually going... Wow. Is this is this the Ennies lobby of Gintama? We gotta go get Robin back. Oh, he, they just he just ran off. Why is she so willing to go with him? It's pretty tough. I mean, yeah, basically, he didn't kill them. Okay, so they know of this family, and they're important. So we know why he's so skilled. The next head. Small but quick. 
prodigy even within the family. I mean, he went off on some kind of journey, so he's probably had a lot of real experience. Lost an eye, apparently. What if somehow this actually... If somehow this plays out and Otai actually falls for Kondo, I can't see it happening. But that'd be surprising. Othello. Better cooking skills, obviously, considering. Wow. Then it goes to shit. I mean, yeah, sure. She left in tears, so we're already kind of far away from smiling. <laughs> Let's just cheat real quick. She did go herself. But, you know, there were... it's a little deeper than that. The brother and the stalker come to take her back. All right. Sure. That's all they want. And we have backup. Gotta love Yorozuya and the Shinsengumi working together. All right, cool. And we have a new ED. Shirtless Gintoki. How you doing? Just posing in the spotlight. Everybody shirtless. How about Sachan? Can she... Okay, we'll stick with the guys, I guess. It's fine. I like the song. It's pretty nice for the ending. There's just pictures of shirtless dudes. Whatever, I'll take it. Katsura. And Elizabeth, of course. Bearing all of whatever is going on with Elizabeth. Sakamoto. Often forget about him, but yeah, he's the end. Okay, well, that's close. <laughs> Who are, are those the are those the four devas? I know it showed them in the preview, but I don't remember exactly what they look like. The just away! Oh god! Ew! Ah, no! <laughs> that just got worse and worse. Like he was gross with his giant ass belly button and everything, and then I saw a G and he's so skinny, and then we go back over to Hata and it's his ass. Why? 
Anyway, I'm not going to watch the preview, so let's talk about that episode. All right, episode 76. We are starting the Yagyu arc, as the preview last time showed. I'm definitely going to be more careful about watching previews from now on. I didn't used to watch them at all, or at the very least, I'd skim them a little bit and just, like, look at one quick image to see, like, who would show up in the next episode or get one tiny little glimpse. I started watching them more closely as we went, because usually I did a good job of not really giving things away. I didn't know when something was going to turn serious or where it was going to go, because in Gintama, so many random nonsensical things can happen all the time that a preview will show one thing and then that was this one small thing that had nothing to do with the rest of the episode. So they were doing pretty good with the, with the preview, so I got a little more comfortable watching them. But from now on, I'll definitely not do that as much anymore. I don't think the preview last time, like, gave crazy things away. Just kind of the setup for this person's existence and generally who they are. But nothing crazy. But I, just for the hell of it, you know, because I would rather have less information, I will definitely avoid watching previews carefully like that from now on. Because I would like to not know when we're getting into arcs. That's what I really liked about Tama's story. It was goofy random episode. Oh, and then it's to be continued. And then it was to be continued again. And it got better and better. And then I was crying at the end. So that was really surprising. So I just like to not know that we're going into an arc. But yeah, nothing was ruined or anything. And I did enjoy this episode. And there was still a lot of surprising funny stuff. And I don't know exactly where it's going to go. But I'm just saying, I'm going to avoid previews mostly. I'll look at them a tiny bit. New OP, which is is fine, it's okay, it's whatever. Um, but uh, you got some cool images in there. Takasugi and his boys show up, so that's exciting. And the ED I like. I like the song there a fair bit. It's one of my favorites. It's no Mr. Raindrop, but it's, it's better than a lot of them. And it's just a bunch of shirtless guys. Okay, sure, why not? I think Atama has a heavy female fan base, which is why the guys are always up there in the popularity polls and, and whatnot, so good for them. They've got that, but yeah. We have our new character, Yagyu Kyube, and so we, when you bring in the name Kyube alongside that other show that I'm watching right now, it's, it's pretty traumatizing. But yeah, the Yagyu family is pretty prestigious powerful swordsman, and he's like a, a prodigy even within this family. Absolutely assumed he was a girl from the preview and from what I saw of him previously. Uh, the short stature, the face, the hair, and, you know, he's pretty flat, but it's fine. You, you can be a small-breasted girl, whatever. Sounds pretty girly, and I was like, okay, there's this girl who's into Otai. I can get behind that. It's honestly less interesting with him being a guy. It's, that's less appealing as a story, honestly. I was disappointed to learn that he was a guy, because we start in the flashback to when they were kids, and when they were saying, like, a boy crying like that, I didn't know who they were referring to at first. I was like, wait a minute. He was the one who was crying. You just said he was a boy? Oh, what? Well. <laughs> so yeah, it was a, apparently a boy. So small statured men is just a thing in their family, but she assures him that it doesn't matter if you're small, as long as you have a big heart and a big powerful soul and whatnot. And if I go off and become a strong samurai, you'll be my wife. And he took this super fucking seriously. Like my God, I don't know what else was going on in there. All the details surrounding it. But he took it way seriously, went off on a journey, lost an eye, it seems, and has come back to take Otai's hand in marriage. And uh, he's very good. Uh, that scene with the Hijikata and all those guys taking them all down all at once and cracking the sword. And they even said, like, if he had wanted to, if that hadn't been the back of the blade, they would have just straight up died. And yeah, they actually would have. Thinking about being some rich kid with dojo training, maybe not being able to live up to real world combat. Uh, not the case. He went on some journey and has probably been in some, some serious shit. Done a lot of real world training, a lot of real experience. Got that eye patch, you know? So, he's tough. And now we gotta fight against him and uh, the four devas and however that's gonna go. I don't know how long that's gonna take. It seems like it could possibly be over next episode, but you never know what's gonna happen. I'm more interested in just more details of the about the backstory that we might get, but it's great to have odd jobs and the Shinsengumi 
together, Shinpachi and Kondo very united, and then the other two on each side there to back them up. That's really cool that they're going in there like that. Otai has never been one of my favorite characters, so it's kind of cool to get an arc that's heavily focused on her, just so I can get more time with her to hopefully like her more and just learning more about her is nice. I do like the character design of Kyube, despite wishing she had been a girl. Um, I like the design, pretty cool. And yeah, it's just, it's portrayed really creepily when he comes back and he's just like saying all this, which sounds insane. Like, oh, you were uh, six years old and you said we were gonna get married, so hello, just like matter of factly, holding her wrists and kissing her like that and taking her and really she, she agrees to go on her own, which is the biggest mystery here. Like why she is so ready to honor this promise they made when they were kids, but she goes with tears in her eyes. Like I mentioned, uh, Annie's Lobby One Piece thing, like yeah, technically Robin went off on her own or Sasuke went off on his own or, or whatever, but you know they need saving, so having that image there with tears in her eyes as she left, trying to talk about, well, she left on her own, maybe she can smile through the marriage, it's okay. Nah, I can't forget that image and we gotta go help, so. That's cool that they're all there to uh, to face these guys and challenge them, and we'll see how that goes. I really want to see what these people are like, especially Kyube in battle. He seems really strong, so I want to see if we can get some, some cool fights and some cool sword techniques. And you also have this other plot going on, which was actually... I think I enjoyed more because it was just so absurd and funny in Kondo's side in the story, which was great. How he's got all this going on, because he of course loves Ote while she's got the Otai while she's got this guy from her past coming back <laughs> who wants to marry her, and Kondo's getting married to a gorilla and the way they cross. I think that was really well done, and Kondo's stuff was just really funny. Like the stuff with Otai, that's cool, but I just wanna. It's mostly just like, okay, he wants to marry her, set up for whatever's to come. Whereas all the gorilla stuff was just very entertaining. If we just went full scale like war between Earth and the orangutan planet, that'd be that'd be great. That'd be a really fun arc. Why not? I love how it was just a couple episodes. They mentioned the orangutan planet with the zombie virus thing, and so now we get to see that again. Like the Matsudaira talk when he's trying to pep Kondo up and assure him, oh, maybe she looks better than she does in the photo. You never know. And apparently he was in an arranged marriage with his wife, and that turned out all right. So. I don't know. But yeah, just looking at the photo, we're trying to mend relations between the planets. Gorilla for a gorilla, it's okay. She's fucking massive. Can't understand each other. It's like, I gotta go take a shit. She gets knocked on the head. He does shit, and then it falls out. Like, that's just like the lowest form of humor imaginable. He poops. The poop falls out, and now everybody sees the poop. But like... It's funny because you just, most people would never actually do it. <laughs> most people would be like, they're writing a story and they're like, well, I can't just have him just poop. And then the poop just falls out. I can't just do that. But Hideaki Sirachi's like, I can and I will. That's right. That's what happens in this scene. The poop falls out and now there's poop all over the ground. He pooped. And that's the joke. And <laughs> it's so stupid that, uh, that I like it. So yeah. He's with her, and then they're just like, beat, they're feeding her the beans, and then they're hitting her, and Kondo's hitting her, and I'm like, oh my god, the orangutans are gonna destroy you all. And I, I want to see if that actually comes into play at all in this arc anymore. If Princess Bubbles, it's gotta be a Dragon Ball reference, right? I don't know. But if Princess Bubbles comes back, or if more orangutans come up, and like, maybe they show up and attack and get in on the fight too, and it becomes our guys versus the Yagyu versus the orangutans, and it's a whole huge thing, or if that's not going to be really relevant anymore, but it was funny. It, it was quite enjoyable as technically, I guess, the B-plot, but it, it, it kind of felt more like the A-plot, just in terms of enjoyment. But yeah, um... Otai definitely is under no obligation to marry Kondo to stop him from doing this. Like I said, giving him some kind of pep talk, like, don't just settle for anybody, try to find someone else that you actually care about and who cares about you that's not necessarily me. She's under no obligation to even do that. Definitely not obligated to go marry the man if she's just not interested. But maybe that'll happen by the end. It would be cool if by the end of this arc there's like a legitimate change in their relationship. Either she actually falls for him, which I don't see happening, or he actually gets over her and moves on or tries to, which 
I kind of don't see happening either because I feel like that's just that's one of the big running jokes that's kind of the status quo and I don't know if we're gonna go for that big of a shakeup. And it's not a huge deal if we don't, because it's not like Kondo and Otai are there all the time, and he's pining after her in every episode, so it's not like it's getting old or anything, but it would just be cool if there was a serious change in their relationship in some way. Like, maybe he would learn, like, hey, maybe I will go look for somebody else. And maybe he'd find someone. You could do some good stuff with that, I don't know, but something's gotta happen between the two of them from, from this. And we'll see how that all plays out. Huh? But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next time. I don't know if we're just gonna get some fights throughout the episode. Maybe we can get some funny gorilla stuff, I don't know. But Kiyube is definitely in the wrong here. Like, she went willingly, basically, but just holding her down like that and trying to say that this thing that you said when you're children has any meaning whatsoever is pretty absurd, and it, it's essentially kidnapping and assault. It's, it's, it's a crime. You, you should stop. But yeah, um, Hijikata coming to the, the club and all the women being all over him. All those Gintama fans slobbering over Hijikata rather than the gorilla. And just like all the, the, the Monday night, Sunday night, whatever kind of shows that they'd be part of. Kondo is just a dumbass who steps in front of a truck and that's some random crime procedural show. All that stuff. Funny little stuff in there. So yeah, I want to see where this is going to go. Uh, mostly just kind of setting this up and introducing this character for the the main plot. And I don't know how important he'll be going forward and how often he'll show up. And uh, I like the gorilla stuff. It was funny and Kagura cheated at Othello. So uh, yeah, it was enjoyable. I want to see what's going to happen and where this will all go with Otai and Kondo and everybody. So uh, let me know your thoughts on the start of this arc. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel. Check out the stuff linked down in the description below as well. I really appreciate it, and I will see you all next time.